Stay tuned for the latest message excerpt from josephprince.com. I believe that in these days, God wants to provide angelic help. Let me tell you something about angels and plagues. Angels are very active in keeping plagues away from God's people. Have you ever read Psalms 91, where it says, No evil will befall you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. Why? For he shall give his angels charge over you. Let me read you the entire thing. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. Now, dwelling place, practically, it is all, all of us not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. All the more, when you see all this happening, don't forsake the assembling. Now, if you have a, a fever, you have running nose, not during this time, for the sake of men, amen, uh, don't come, amen, don't come, all right? And, and we, we will try to get you the, uh, find a way to uh, minister to you. Don't worry, if you're confined also, let us know. Amen. But only during this time, for the sake of human infirmity, sometimes you do it for that. All right? But, but don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. This is where the angelic activity is strong. He's looking towards the house, extend towards the house. We need prayer. Every time we come together, we need the prayer of blessing over us, the prayer of covering, the prayer of protection. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Are you listening, people? And, and, and uh, he says here, No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Your dwelling is not just personal. It's actually, listen, it is uh, your family. Dwelling is the uh, a Hebrew word for ohel, which is the tabernacle or the church. Amen? Or your family. But it's a gathering of people. No plague shall come near your dwelling. Why? For... In Hebrew key, because, this is the reason, because he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Very interesting. I read this, and, and, and again, every time I read this, I get a new revelation. The word angels is plural, of course. The word you is singular. Now, you can be you all, which is a plural you. Am I right? Plural you. There's a singular you, there's a plural you. This is not plural you. This is singular you. God give one you angels. So every day when you wake up, you should say, angels accompany me. Angels are with me. Though a thousand shall fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, it will not come near you. Why? God has given his angels charge over me. Amen. Like saving Private Ryan. Remember? The officer and all the men were told, they were given charge over Private Ryan. Watch over him, right? Angels are involved. Don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. You know how many angels we have? Give them to Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. Mount Zion is not Mount Sinai. In fact, uh, previously, he, he contrasts, before he come to Mount Zion, he contrasts Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai is where God gave the Ten Commandments. God demand righteousness from men. 3,000 people died. Mount Zion is where the Holy Spirit came. God did not give the law, but the Spirit, and 3,000 people were saved. Amen. Where God gave righteousness as a gift. We are no longer on Mount Sinai. We are not under law. We are under grace. Mount Zion. Amen. Can I have a good amen? And the temple of Solomon is built on Mount Zion. Amen. So he says here, we have come to Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable, again, to an innumerable, to an innumerable, cannot be numbered, innumerable. You didn't hear me. Innumerable company of angels. And where are they? To the general assembly and church of the firstborn. Jesus is the firstborn. We are called the church of the firstborn. Angels, this innumerable company of angels are where the church of the firstborn is. Oof. Oh. Many of you have met them, you don't even realize. You have met angels, you don't realize. The Bible says in Hebrews 13 verse 2, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for by so doing, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Charles Spurgeon shares about a German shoemaker in the 1800s when the cholera outbreak that killed a lot of people, just like the bubonic plague in Africa. And during that time in the 1800s, when this cholera outbreak broke out, 
this man actually put out on his, this shoemaker, this German shoemaker who's a believer, st stuck outside his window, Psalms 91. A thousand shall fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, it will not come near you. And Charles Spurgeon shares how during that time, so many people died around him even, the, his uh, 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 people that he knew, but in, he never fell sick. Not only that, his business flourished. And he, he realized that those who came to him and did business, they were protected. Amen. You have met angels. You thought they were normal people. I remember this, uh, again, it's Billy Graham who shares a, a story that he read in Reader's Digest of a very prominent neurosurgeon who shared this story in Reader's Digest. Billy Graham shared about this man. In fact, Billy Graham mentioned him by name. And he says that this man shared about how he's a, he's a well-known neurosurgeon. One day, there's a knock on his door during winter time. The snow was falling heavily. He opened the door and there's an 11-year-old girl there. And the 11-year-old girl looks so pathetic, like sad. And he said, can you please come and take care of, you know? He assumed it was the mother. Mother was sick and all that. But he doesn't make house calls, you know? <laughs> Moreover, he's, he's a well-known surgeon and all that. He doesn't make house calls. But something about the, the child made him feel compassionate. So he took his jacket and all that. And he went out to the house where the, the, the child left. And, and he went to the house of the place where he's supposed to go. A lady was there. He realized that, you know, the lady needs to go to the hospital, uh, uh, but he was able to give her some, some help, some previous help. And because he was there on time, any, any later, the lady would be dead. And he told the lady, you know, it's amazing that your daughter came at the right time. The daughter? I don't have a daughter. I, I had a daughter. She died some time ago. He says, but the girl that came to the door, so I, I, I send no girl. They can appear as a... And Billy Graham believes in an angel. Yeah. By the way, he has a book called Angels, God's Secret Agents by Billy Graham. Now he says it's amazing that people believe more in demons today than angels. Wow. They are less with them than with us. You know that? In fact, that reminds me of a story. It's in my book, The, Power, the Prayer of Protection, how uh, Elisha... You know, the enemies realized that Elisha was giving information. Amen? Secret information to the king of Israel. Every time the king of Syria tried a new move, all right, king of Israel would know the move because the prophet would tell him the move. So finally, he sent armies to arrest the prophet in his house. And then uh, the servant of the prophet got up and he trembled. He said, oh, alas, the enemies are here. And they're surrounding him. And the man of God was just chill. I mean, he was cool. He looked around and says, Lord, open his eyes. But before that, he said this. He says, he says uh, Master, what shall we do? The servant asked. He answered, Elisha answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. I want to tell you something, okay? The angels that are with you are more than the virus that are attacking Amen. out there. Amen. God never plays catch up. The devil does. Amen. But what the devil does is more visible, is more uh, tangible, so the devil goes by senses. God is a God who wants faith from His people. Amen? We walk by faith, not by sight. Can I have a good amen? So here goes this battle. He, the devil wants you in the realm of sight. So we are more aware of the virus because we see it, we read it, we see it on the news, we, we read it, we hear it, we see it, we hear it, we say it, we hear it, we see the mask. We hear it, we see it, all right? So we are always reminded, right? But then, if someone come and tell you, God has released, beginning of this year, God has released a new anointing, a new strain, if you would, a new anointing of healing. Amen. You don't see it, amen. amen? Maybe we should have asked some of our pastors that come up to do communion to wear a certain mask that says, it's released, <laughs> amen? Because it's not, what God does is not visible. It is not tangible. It is not, sometimes you do feel, amen. And sometimes you do feel the anointing of God on you, but don't depend on feelings. We walk by faith and not by sight, which is representative of the, all the five senses, feelings as well. So uh, we are not aware that God has done something. For example, when, 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 uh, when God wanted to raise a deliverer to set his people free from Egypt, what happened? 
Moses was born. But he was so quiet, nobody knew he was born. God has done something great. And this baby, whose little cry changed history, amen? When the, when the, the daughter of Pharaoh heard the cry, it broke her heart, sort of softened her heart, her maternal instinct kicked in, and she threw the baby, even though the baby was doomed to die because she's, he's part of the Hebrew. And notice that, a cry changed history. She never knew it changed history for her history as well, and her nation. One little baby, amen? But it all happened because uh, uh, God is in control, God is in charge, God sent a deliverer. But the world was unaware, oblivious. But when the devil reacted, the devil plays catch up. When the devil realized a champion was born, a deliverer was born, amen? The, the, the liberator of the Hebrew people was born. What did he do? He had Pharaoh kill all the babies, all the Hebrew babies. Of course, God, God preserved, like I said, with a cry. He preserved. He preserved Moses. And even had Pharaoh's house pay for Moses. Yeah. Education and all that. His food, his, you know, his mother, his mother was the, uh, his mother, the Jewish mother, mother actually uh, was hired to take care of him. Amen. To nurse him, to take care of him. Isn't it amazing? God can even make his enemies pay for you. I always say, you do not know what God is doing in your life, look at what the devil is doing. And then reverse it. If you're being attacked in your body a lot, it's because new health is coming your way. Amen. If you respond with eyes of faith and look at the Lord, He's going to turn the whole thing around and all of a sudden you're going to see all your diseases all right, floating on the seashore. Amen. Back and forth, back and forth. All right, dead. Yeah. Can I have a good amen? Yeah. Yeah. Stand to your feet as I rebuke this fear. All right, if you have fear in your heart, just place your hand all across this place upon your heart. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Doesn't want you to live in fear. Father, in Jesus' name, I rebuke every spirit of fear that is trying to take root in the lives of these precious people, Lord, that's listening to this word right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be thou uprooted. In the name of Jesus, come out of their lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and be bound from them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you that your angels surround us, Lord. And this week, as we go forth, Lord, I pray, for Father, in Jesus' name, that everyone under the sound of my voice will walk in the protection of Psalms 91. Do a thousand fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, it will not come near us. Let no evil happen to them. Let no plague come near them and their family, their dwelling. And Father, I pray in Jesus' name that with long life, you satisfy every one of them. Preserve them, protect them, place them all throughout this week at the right place at the right time. And Father, preserve every one of them and keep every one of them and their loved ones from every disease, from the Wuhan coronavirus, and from every danger, harm, tragedy, and all evil. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, this week, your will, which is health, wholeness, peace, prosperity, come into our lives, Lord. Your will be done in our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name. And all the people said, God bless you. We'll see you again, okay? Don't forsake the assembling. This is where it's all happening. Praise God. This excerpt is brought to you by josephprince.com. To get the full message, visit josephprince.com.